Hi, it's Paul Antonelli here. Uh, today I'm going to talk about something that I often get asked by clients and by other business owners and I thought I'd take some time to share this with you. One of the things obviously you know we're looking at creating a, uh, an ideal business and part of that creating an ideal business or a business that really grooves in for you is some independence and what that means is how do you create or what what can you do to have a business that is actually to the highest level possible independent from you which means that you don't really need to be terribly involved with it so i'm going to go through the top 10 tools that i recommend uh, or that you can implement and get hold of that will help you build independence from your business the very first important tool is i've got a, a process which i call uh, creating your ideal scene and so the first thing about independence is defining what you want that to look like. As I've, as I've talked to before in other videos and also in my podcast, I talk about creating an ideal scene, which is uh, the ideal future, what it looks like in the future, the ideal future going forward. And so you've got your current scene and you've got your ideal scene. And so the first thing that you really need to put together is what this ideal scene for you looks like. Do you, are you involved in the business daily? Uh, do you only plug in two or three times a week? Do you have particular days? Are you involved in operational activity or whatever? So building the ideal scene is tool number one. If you do that, it provides a very clear picture and your brain goes, okay, I get it. I understand exactly what it is that I'm moving towards. Tool number two is statistics, numbers, tracking numbers, statistics. So what happens is, for you to be independent, if you've been a business owner for many years or just started, you know, one of the things that you, you when you're away from the business is that like, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on. Are things tracking well? Will I come back if I go on a holiday and will the business still exist? You know, is my money going to get burned? All that sort of stuff. And the easiest solution for that is putting statistics in place that track all the, the numbers that are important to you and make sure those numbers are current and live. So the second tool, which is really helpful to enable you to relax a little bit and step back so that you've got a clear picture is statistics and uh, in our business we have we track i track a whole range of statistics and i have about 12 stats that give me a very good picture right across the business at high level and then lots of sub stats that i can go and look at if i'm not happy with a particular high level stat so statistics a bit of a dashboard that's tool number two Tool number three is outsourcing, is outsourcing. And what this means is you, you know, you might have staff and you've got contractors within your business, but there might be some activities that you do or that you find you're engaged in that you can't, you don't really need someone full time, but it would be good for you to get it off your table. And one of the most effective ways of doing that is by outsourcing, it can be permanent sort of outsourcing or ad hoc outsourcing. And a great platform that we use is Upwork. It's a really good platform. You can go up there, put a brief and attract uh, people to do any sort of functions. And that could be handling inquiries, it could be bookkeeping, it could be producing emails, whatever it is, you know. So outsourcing is a fantastic tool to implement and that's uh, tool number three. Tool number four is automation. I love automation and all my businesses one of my key principles is don't have a human being do anything that can be automated anything within the business so ideally anything that can be managed by a system a process automated and and when i say automation i mean independent triggers that take place which are independent of a human being so a human being doesn't have to tick a box or send something it's all done by a system so by using an automation platform, it's really good for your extraction, but also reduces the dependency on your team. We use a fantastic uh, system, CRM called Entreport. Check it out, Entreport. It's a great system and it does, it enables you to do full end-to-end -end automation right across your business. So that's item number four. Item number five is building a business that, and the, I guess it's more of a, a principle where there's no location dependency. So the way that you operate, you don't have to be in a particular location. And of course we do have physicality in a lot of businesses. We have premises, you might have an office, all those sorts of things. But trying to structure your arrangement and how you operate so you're not location dependent will create a higher level of independence of the business from you. Number six is hats. Hats, hats, hats. Now I'm not talking about hat, hat. Uh, a hat in our language is a procedure, uh, a 
not a job description, but a procedure or a how to get something done. And typically what will happen is if you're in business, the reason that the business isn't necessarily independent from you is because you've got things that you're doing and things that you do and things that you look after that is in your head. If it's in your head, no one else really knows about it. So you've got to get it out of your head. You've got to get it into a format, into a document, into a training video, and you create a hat. The hat is how you hat someone. Uh, hatting is sort of a verb, and that enables you to effectively move things away from you and know they're going to get done to the standard that you are that you want within your business. So that's tool number six, hats, you know, effective hats, writing up how-to procedures and documenting it will be a great tool for allowing you to step back a bit. Tool number seven is setting up regular check-ins. And this is, this is uh, and look, a lot of us, it happens in business anyway, but when you're trying to move away from the business, the best way to not get drawn into day to day and the team members have got a question or something's going on is by having defined regular check-ins. It could be 30 minutes, it could be an hour, it could be weekly, it could be fortnightly. And what your team will get used to is saying, oh look, I won't bother, I won't bother him now. I know we can discuss it in the upcoming meeting. So by having regular check-in points, which are you know, a bit of a rhythm, that enables people to not bother you all the time and just connect up with you so you can share thought, thoughts or insights on, uh, on any support or anything that they need at that particular point in time. Having a clear plan, because often in a lot of businesses, I work with a lot of business owners, the plan and the strategy sort of sits with them and then they drive it through their different team managers or people in the organization or other team members. And so having a clear plan and having it documented so that everyone knows what's going on and what the targets are means that there's everyone's on the same on the same page effectively we use a bit of a platform called the one page strategic plan which uh, you know enables you to sort of map out on a document on an a3 piece of paper a very clear plan of what's needed and what you need to do and it has all team members involved in it and you set up 90 day targets you set up one year targets you set up three year targets and you make it very clear as to what the focal points are and what are the things that everyone's working on at the moment to move the business forward and upward yeah so a very clearly documented plan that's shared with everyone that's tool number eight. Tool number nine is cash, is tracking cash. Uh, I've sort of had some unfortunate uh, financial events where I've been bankrupt a couple of times, uh, gone through some a lot of stress, I wouldn't recommend it. It does teach you a lot of lessons, but I highly wouldn't recommend it. And because of that, I'm very particular and very fussy about how I manage cash across my businesses and what I do, because cash is everything. And so I've got a bit of a system which I call financial stability. And so by implementing a cash management and tracking system, it enables you to have a bit of peace of mind about exactly where your business is at. So it's a great tool because it enables you to know exactly where your business is at from a cash perspective. Are you increasing cash? Are you burning cash? What's exactly going on? And that enables you to step back a bit, but know you've got a really good view on the cash and what's happening within the business. So cash, tracking cash is a, is a great tool that makes you relax a little bit, enables you to know that I've got a picture, I can see what's going on. And the final tool, tool number 10, is a tool that I call the Time Matrix. And I was having a discussion with a business owner, a mate of mine, last week, and he's too much in the business, working 30, 40 hours a week, wants to extract himself. And lots of, and when I'd say, what sort of things are you doing? Oh, lots of activity. I mean, I mean the delivery production side of it, you know, dealing with staff, all sorts of different issues. It's really good to get very specific because if you want to extract and reduce, say, if you're working 40 hours a week and you want to get it down to 24 within the business, you got to work out where is those 16 hours going to come from? What are you going to what are you going to get rid of effectively? And you can the only real way that I think you can do that is by being very very specific. And what that means, well, I've got a time matrix tool where you track, you effectively track on a daily basis every activity that you're doing. You know, pretty granular. So you might say handling inquiries, you know, staff meetings processing invoices, I don't know, whatever they are, and you put in how many hours a day you do that. And you do that typically over two, three, best over four weeks. Once you've done that over four weeks, it becomes really clear what you're spending your time on, and it'll enable you to identify low value activities, activities that just are not worth you spending time on, and they're the what we call the low hanging fruit. That's what you zoom in on target first, and you get them, them off your plate. 
And so by having a time matrix framework, you can actually look and define very clearly what activities, what things you're doing you can get rid of. It's really powerful if you do that, because it makes you realize that you're spending time on stuff that you just shouldn't be spending time on. But if you don't get specific, you just go, I'm doing a lot of stuff, I'm dealing with that, I'm in team, I'm talking to Pete, blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. But you don't know exactly what it is. So if you're trying to extract and make yourself independent, you need to know exactly what it is that you need to stop doing and get rid of. So they're really my top 10 tools for helping you create independence for you within your business. So I'm just gonna rattle through them again as a bit of a summary. So the first thing is creating a very clear picture of what the future should look like. That's your ideal scene. Second thing is statistics, track statistics, all the stats that are important to you so you've got really good visibility across the business and know what's going on at any point in time. Number three is outsourcing. Outsource, we use a platform called Upwork. Number four is automation, which is try to automate and remove people from as many functions as possible, it includes your functions. We use a platform called Entreport to do that. Then you've got number five is try to create uh, for you no location dependency. So look at activities that need you to be location dependent and see if you can get rid of those activities. Hats, 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 writing up hats, how to procedures, get it out of your head, get it on a document, share it with people. It's a great way to go about it. Tool number seven is set up regular check-ins, time slots, so that the team don't bother you. They've got specific times where they can catch up with you and talk about things. Number eight is have a clear plan. Clear plan, 90 day plan, uh, one year plan, three year plan, have what the priorities are for the next 90 days, all that sort of stuff, share it with the team, everyone's on board with it. That enables you to do that, that's tool number eight. Number nine is track cash. Cash is king, as I always say. So have a great tool for tracking cash and financial stability is, is really important. And the number 10 tool is a time matrix. Find out what you're spending your time on so you know what you can extract yourself from and move on to something else. So there are my top 10 tools. I've got a lot of information on all of those tools in other videos, also in my podcast. So if you want to find out a little bit more how you can build and utilize these 10 tools, check out some of my other socials and my podcast and you can find out a little bit more. Fantastic. Thanks for joining me in this video and I'll catch up with you next time. Ciao for now.